Can we go back to where we were in the beginning when we first met? And the answer is always going to be no. Why in the world would your girlfriend or wife work for something you've been giving her for free for the last six months? Well, it's for the same reason they're never going to make another payment for a car she's been allowed to drive around without making any payments. Get your CME tickets today at MasculineExcellence.com. In the world of credit, you have your high-risk customers and you have your lowest customers. A customer with a low credit score is a high risk, and of course, a customer with a high high credit credit score is a low risk. Now, obviously, their income, their debt to income ratios, were obviously also factors in assessing the kind of risk that, of course, gives you different customers of varying risks. But in credit terms, most women have terrible relationship credit. Most women have defaulted on their payments. And just about all of their relationships have been repossessed or foreclosed on. So if we're using a credit scale, I would say that the average American woman probably has a credit score of about 420. Yes, there is the rare girl out there who has credit in the mid-700s because she was raised by a strong father. She didn't get fat, she kept her virginity, and didn't get any tattoos. But those girls are few and far between, and they never stay on the market for long. You guys have heard me talk about this before. If an American female in this country can make it to 18 years old without getting fat, without losing her virginity, without starting smoking, and without getting tattoos or irregular piercings, that woman has hit the lottery. She can literally write her, she can write her own ticket. She's set for life. 18 years old, virgin, doesn't get fat, doesn't smoke, no tattoos or piercing. She's set for life. She could lock down a high value, any high value man she desires, she could absolutely lock down. But most women these days have foreclosures on their relationship credit. They have repossessions on their relationship credit. They've got hospital bills on their relationship credit. They've got unpaid student loans. And of course, uh, department store debt into the five figures. Now, most of us know and understand that in order to build and repair your credit, is to pay down your debt, right? Spend smart, save money, make financially sound decisions, deprive yourself of useless, expensive indulgences. It is very, very difficult to do, but if you really, really work at it and you stay consistent, you can and will rebuild your credit to make yourself a lower risk customer, which of course gives you more opportunities to purchase things on credit. Now, women could do the same things in their dating lives. They could stop sleeping around. They could most certainly get into better shape. Women could eat better. They could stop drinking. They can make better decisions when it comes to men. They can stop doing hard drugs. They can stop smoking. But because we all know that most women are not interested in doing what's difficult, it should come as no surprise that they have come up with several different ways to circumvent the costs associated with locking down a high-value male. In other words... Today's women have figured out how to get something for nothing. They figured out how to get something, which is a man's commitment for almost nothing. And they usually do this in one of three ways, guys. Stay with me here. Again, we're still in the world of credit. Okay. The first way, number one, the first way is the down payment and default method. This is the girl that puts down a sizable down payment in the form of kindness femininity, good behavior, sexual openness, sexual availability, a nice body, willingness willingness, willingness to make you a priority. Now, this girl's expectations are reasonable. She's the girl who understands that she has to give a man a reason to want to commit to her. She doesn't expect something for nothing, at least not yet. So she makes her down payment, right? She makes that down payment because she understands that, that that's what she has to do. That down payment is enough to drive the car off the lot, or in dating terms, get and keep the attraction of attractive men. Now, she'll make those payments on time for the first few months, but after a while, she'll start making her payments a little bit late. She's not watching what she eats quite as closely as she used to. She's only working out twice a week instead of five days a week like when you first met her. She's not as enthusiastic about giving you sex as she once was. She stops sucking your and she doesn't dress as sexy for you quite often as she used to when you guys used to go out. 
Well, before you know it, she stopped making those payments altogether. But instead of repossessing her car, what do most guys do, guys? Most guys let her continue to drive the car even though she hasn't made a payment in months. Then, when guys attempt to meagerly call her up and say, uh, Miss Smith, you haven't made a payment in a few months. It'd be great if you could make a payment, but if you can, it's no big deal. We'll certainly give you a few more months to catch up. This is the equivalent of saying, hey, babe, I've noticed you've put on a few pounds. Can you hit the gym? And while you're at it, I haven't gotten a blowjob in quite a while and sex kind of seems to be dropping off. Can we go back to where we were in the beginning when we first met? And the answer is always going to be no. Why in the world would your girlfriend or wife work for something you've been giving her for free for the last six months? Well, it's for the same reason they're never going to make another payment for a car she's been allowed to drive around without making any payments. Why pay for a car that they're letting you drive for nothing, right? I certainly wouldn't. The second way that women get around the costs of locking down a man of value is the low down payment, zero interest for six months girl. Now she looks a little bit better than most girls. She's usually, I don't know, maybe like a seven and a half or up. She's got a great body. She stays in shape. She is sexually open and willing, has a pretty good temperament. Now she doesn't really cook, doesn't really clean, and she'll only dress up when she feels like it. But for most guys, she is sexy enough to allow her to slack off in some areas. Now, this girl's expectations are a little bit higher because in her mind, looking better than most girls, in her mind, again, is enough to warrant the commitment of a high caliber guy. So the first six months goes by and the girl doesn't do anything to improve herself, which is fine, that was the deal. Zero payments for six months, zero interest. So on month seven, her boyfriend expects that first payment, but guess what? That first payment never comes guys. Not only is she not trying to improve herself, her fitness level falls off. The sex drops off and she's getting more and more neurotic and bitchy by the day. Once again, we pick up that phone. We make that phone call. Uh, Miss Smith, you were supposed to make your first payment, but we haven't received it yet. But guys, Miss Smith never intended on making that payment in the first place. Why? Because she felt like her down payment was enough to just buy the car. And once again, because we let her drive the car or stay in the relationship without making a payment or improving herself, she doesn't feel the need to make a payment or improve herself. This is why I always talk about the fact that you must always demand your woman's best. If you do not do this consistently, she is going to fall off. It's inevitable. People get complacent. They get lazy. This is how this works. The third way women attempt to circumvent the costs of locking down a high-value male is the girl who not only doesn't feel like she doesn't have to make a down payment in the form of bringing attractive traits and characteristics to the table, she doesn't feel like she should have to make payments altogether. She feels like her very presence and company are more than enough to warrant the commitment of any man out there. Now, incidentally enough, this is the girl who has the highest expectations. This is the girl who has a laundry list of requirements that men need to meet in order to be given the privilege of being in her very presence. Funny how that works, right? The less women, <laughs> the less women tend to bring to the table, the more entitled they tend to feel, the more they feel like they deserve in a man. 